Hello students good evening all welcome back to the daily news analysis i hope you are doing great so today we will be understanding the important news articles of 30th april 2022 and as i say that reading newspaper is a sine qua non in excelling law exams with your educator prithvira singh let us begin the session now on the very first page now this article is being carried from the indian express newspaper right and you have would have seen that the loud speakers in the various religious centers temples and mosques mosques were being brought down by the order of the government they are being following the 2017 high court order plus 2018 government directives right now the question may be asked that which high court order which case was it 2017 case and the 2018 case students you would be knowing that the loud speakers are being used in various religious uh, institutions in temples even in mosques right where the morning azan is being uh, is being chanted right in the morning hours and in the evening hours similarly for the religious congregation even in the temples it's being uh, it's being used right now it violates definitely many laws like the noise pollution control law of the year 2000 similarly the high court Uh, Allahabad High Court order of 2017 also talks about the the permissible limit of the uh, of the of the loud speakers right so this issue talks about the government which is actually you know bringing down the loud speakers from the mosques and however this is being seen uh, as you know many people are seeing that uh, government from being anti religious but then they are saying that we are just following the noise pollution rules of the year 2000 right so in this sense thousands of illegal and unauthorized loud speakers have been taken down across the state right and their loudness has been capped right that means it has been limited under the government order of 2018 and the rules which are being set as per the noise pollution rules 2000 right so they may ask you that in which year the noise pollution rules or the noise control pollution noise pollution rules were being set very very important students the year was 2000 and they may ask you on these these lines right so it was the noise pollution rules of the year 2000 which gives you the permissible limit of the noise right that means in which all areas what sound limit should be there right what noise limit should be there plus there is also a judgment of alabad high court Lucknow bench Allahabad Allahabad High Court in the year 2017 right now this is a sound decibel limits which is being set in the noise pollution uh, pollution rule 2000 right now the sound inside the library as per the sound decibel limit under the noise act of 2000 is 50 decibel that means inside the library you don't have much no, uh, much noise right so they may ask you that what is the permissible limit of the noise in the library so the answer would be 50 decibel now the conversation between 2 to 3 people is at 60 decibel the sound of lightning right the sky lightning is 120 decibel the underground metro train is 100 decibel the busy traffic crossing with no vehicle horns is 70 decibel right so in this sense uh they have you know classified the permissible sound decibel limits in various regions right so in the library as you can see it is 50 decibel right so the things that you have to keep in mind is the noise pollution rules of 2000 number 1 number 2 the alabad high court order of 2017 which we'll just explore and definitely the sound decibel limits in these areas at least you must remember 60 decibel which is a sound decibel limit for the conversation of among the 2 to 3 people right now the case which i was actually mentioning for the year 2017 alabad high court was motilal yadav versus state of uttar pradesh so in motilal yadav versus state of uttar pradesh the court said that you know the 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 noise pollution rules of 2000 should be adhered to should be implemented as early as possible right 
and it directed and you know even the uh, uh, the the order of the uttar pradesh government in the year 2022 directed all the police commissioners divisional commissioners and the district magistrates and the sps to strictly ensure that the order passed under the motilal yadav versus state of uttar pradesh and pollution control uh, you know rules of 2000 should be followed in letter and spirit right now but the government has come to a knowledge that there has been many religious institutions which are flaunting the standard decibel norms and are using loud speakers right they are using loud speakers in large numbers right so as you can see the order says that the 2000 rules define the ambient air quality standards in respect of noise right when i say ambient air quality standards in respect to noise that means in the they have given different permissible you know uh, noise uh, decibel sound uh, decibel units for different for the industrial commercial residential and silence zones right so they have bifurcated the zones based on the uh, and then they have decided that what decibel uh, limit should be applicable there right as you can see on the screen under the noise pollution rules of 2000 industrial area the limit is being set to 75 decibels right 75 decibels a lakh right this is a term which is being used uh, to measure uh, the sound in decibels lakh which is the time weighted average of the level of sound in decibels on scale a and which is relatable to human hearing correct so in industrial areas at day time the sound permissible limit is 75 decibel and it is 70 at the night similarly in commercial area 65 decibel in residential it is 55 decibels and in the silence zones very important it is 50 decibels during the night right so this is wh- where the examiner might uh, ask you the question in the silence zone the limit is 50 decibel during day time correct so silence zones are defined as those areas comprising up to 100 meter around hospitals right so when i say silence zones i mean those areas where near 100 meter you have the hospitals the educational institutions the courts the religious places and any other area which is declared as such by the competent authority right the silence zones silence zones like again repeat again courts religious places educational institutions the uh, the 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 hospitals right there they are they are being declared as silence zones and here the permissible sound limit is 50 decibel during the day time so very important and they may ask you that what is the noise permissible limit for the silent zones so the answer would be 50 decibels and in the night this should be 40 decibels right and the cut off time you know the cut off time when i say day time it is defined as 6 am to 10 pm and the night time is defined as 10 pm to 6 am right so as you can see the difference almost 10 decibel difference in all the areas all the uh, uh, all the regions right and the night time is between 10 to 6 am right 10 pm to 6 am correct so this is how the the order asked the officials to remove the illegal loud speakers correct because they were not following the rules set up in the no- noise rules of 2000 and the motilal yadav versus state of uttar pradesh judgment right i hope it is clear right so an interesting article carried from uh, indian express moving ahead the core sectors growth i'm talking about the industrial sectors the eight sectors right where from where the industrial index of index for industrial production is being calculated you would be knowing about index index for industrial production right so it calculates the index based on eight sectors eight sectors of the economy right and the core sectors these are also called as core sectors and they have seen the growth slumping down right slowing to 4.3% right it is slowing to 4.3% in march and moderately lower moderately lower than 6% growth recorded in february right it is lower than february but still it is reflecting the second highest growth over the 5 months right so at least if i compare this growth rate of 
with the last five months it is the second highest definitely in february it was 6.3 percent in march it is 4.3 percent although it is slow but then it is highest compared to the last five months right now the question may be asked that which all eight sectors are there included in the calculation of index for industrial production so very important guys it is coal crude oil cement right c cube then you have natural gas refinery products fertilizers steel and electricity so you have to buy hard these uh, uh, these eight core sectors right and you can always devise any mnemonic for example so this is c friends i have devised a mnemonic here c cube friends c cube stands for c stands for c cube stands for coal crude oil and cement right so it stands for coal crude oil cement then friends friends stands for fertilizer refinery electricity natural gas and steel right so always remember this mnemonic guys i am quoting it here again c cube friends and it includes all the eight core industrial sectors c cube friends right so this is all about this article moving ahead guys there have been new rules which have come for the uh, credit cards and the debit cards and uh, the new directions are being issued they would be applicable from july 1st this year let us understand the rules now these guidelines are known as rbi credit card and debit card issuance and conduct directions 2022 and they would be applicable from july 1st 2022 right now as far as the uh, uh, the the cards are concerned i mean uh, the condition which is being laid down for the credit and debit cards is that most scheduled commercial banks only with a net worth of 100 crore rupees can issue debit debit credit card sorry right so those scheduled commercial banks which have a net worth of 100 crore rupees can only issue the credit card to ye cheez aap hamesha mind mein rakhiye ki ye naye rules ke hisab se under the new rules the the net worth of the commercial bank should be 100 crore rupees in order to issue the credit card agar 100 crore rupees net worth nahi hai to that commercial bank cannot issue credit card kyunki credit cards are actually you know the non performing assets for the bank and if it is not being paid for the straight period of greater than 90 days it that asset would become would start acting as not non performing right something called as bad debt or non performing asset or npa right so the, therefore the government is very clear that they would issue credit card only to those banks which has the net worth of 100 crore rupees the only exception is the regional rural banks the only exception is the regional rural banks which need to collaborate with other banks to do so correct now similarly the urban cooperative banks ucbs with a net worth of more than 100 crore rupees also can issue the the cards subject to certain guidelines for example they can issue the credit cards to members only right so the urban cooperative banks can issue the credit cards only to its members and that means they cannot issue the cards to non members they cannot issue co branded credit cards and the total unsecured loans and advances given by the urban cooperative bank cannot exceed 10% of its assets right that means such urban cooperative bank should not have very high loans right and their total unsecured loans should be cannot exceed 10% of its assets right number 2 number 3 the nbfcs registered with the reserve bank with a minimum net owned fund of rupees 100 crores can also issue the credit cards right so these are some facts which you have to uh, keep in mind and they may ask you that what are the which among the following statements are correct with regard to the new credit and debit card rules 
as per RBI guidelines 2022. So the answer would be uh, 100 crores for the scheduled commercial bank, and there is exception for the uh, regional rural banks, correct? And for the urban cooperative banks, they also can issue, but they cannot issue the co-branded credit cards. Plus, their unsecured loans and advances should not be exceeding 10% of their assets, right? And NBFCs registered with the RBI only can issue the uh, the credit cards, but then the condition is that their minimum net owned fund should also be 100 crore rupees, right? Provided that they have a certificate of registration with the RBI and the permission to enter the business, right? So very important article from the Hindu. It's something which uh, I expect a question on this, right? Now, as far as the debit card issue is concerned, all banks can issue the debit cards without needing the approval of the RBI, right? So that means for the issuance of the debit card, the bank need do not need or do not require the approval of the RBI as it was required for the credit card, right? But the condition is that the debit cards can be issued only to those only to the customers which have the saving bank account, saving bank account in the bank, right? So either they have the saving bank account or the current bank account in the respective concerned banks, and it would not be issued to the cash credit or loan account holders, right? So the so the first condition, and it is important for the exam. There is no condition being laid out for the issuance of the debit banks. I mean, they need not take the approval of the RBI. I mean, uh, to for the issuance of the debit cards, but they would issue the debit cards only to their customers who have the saving bank or the uh, you know the current bank account in the concerned bank, and they cannot issue the debit uh, credit uh, debit card to the cash credit or loan account holders, right? So this is also very important and banks cannot force customers to get a debit card and cannot link this to receiving any other facility from the bank, right? It is not that the, you, the banks, because it has been normally seen that the banks issue the debit cards and then they, uh, you know, link this to receiving any other facility from the bank. So such foundations should not happen, right? And the banks cannot force the customers to get a debit card, right? So this is a very good article. You can just go through it. Now, uh, moving to the editorial section, right? So there was an interesting editorial in the Hindu page, which talks about the language war. You all would be showing, uh, seeing uh, these days that the South Indian movies are dominating the Bollywood, right? All the movies starting from Pushpa, Triple R, KGF, they are actually dominating the Bollywood uh, industry and there is was a recently held debate between Arjun uh, Ajay Devgan and some and one South Indian star over the language issue right now this fellow said that uh, these days South Indian movies are dominating the Bollywood Ajay Devgan said that no it is not so even you have to dub your movies in Hindi to actually you know reach to maximum number of people right at the same time Ajay Devgan also gave a statement which is actually technically incorrect that Hindi is our national language, right? We all as a student of law know that we don't have any national language. Hindi is just your official language. It is not a national language. In fact, there is no national language of the country. And it is being said that only 30% of the people in India speak Hindi, right? And, and Hindi was not declared as a national language, right? Uh, there was many protests from the South Indian uh, states and and Hindi is being used as official language. So we have Hindi is a Raj Bhasha and not Rashtra Bhasha. We don't have any Rashtra Bhasha, right? So it was a so therefore the debate started uh, about the language and this article explores that should we have a national language or not, right? Now, now although Amit Shah, the home minister, uh, the home minister of the country, Union Home Minister, has recently urged that Hindi as the lingua franca rather than english in the interstate communication this means that in for the interstate communication hindi should be prioritized should, should be used right even vd savarkar the founder of the uh, the rss the hindutva icon who first advocated the idea of hindi to be declared the national language right and articulated the slogan hindi hindu hindustan and possibly from my uh, series my lecture uh, on daily analysis on dr ambedkar 
you would have seen that even ambedkar was in support of hindi in devanagari script to be declared as a national language of the country right as they believed that it was a unif unifying force and it would unite the country together right but then we are a multi diverse country right we are a multicultural country there are 22 scheduled languages you know apart from the english and uh, there are 175 local languages and 54 dialects in india to impose any particular language on the nation uh, may not actually uh, serve the purpose as you all would be knowing that the schedule 8 schedule 8 of the constitution talks about the languages the languages and it there are clearly 22 scheduled languages in india the first language to be added into this list was sindhi right so originally there were 14 languages and then today there are 22 languages so how many are added eight right the first language to be added was sindhi right so scheduled languages means they have been recognized by the constitution but hindi is the only official language of the union of india it is being it will be used for all the official communication along with english for time being right so that means english was also being considered as official language just for 15 years that means till 1965 and then that then they would be taking the decision right but hindi is the official language of the union of india right mentioned in the eighth schedule right and the condition that uh, was being ta uh, talked about on the, in those th those days was that that at least every language in order to be declared as a scheduled language should have minimum 10000 speakers each right and if it is not then it would be declared as other language right now hindi as a mother tongue of over 52 crore people by subsuming more than 5 crore claimants right hindi is probably spoken not more than 30% as i am i was saying you but it is not mother tongue for remaining 70% of the people right so therefore we must not consider hindi i mean a hindi must not be considered as to be as uh, as as the national language certainly and this article also says that although hindi is primus inter pares means first among the equals but then it may must not be imposed as a national language and it should not be as a lingua franca for indians right and what happened in pakistan and sri lanka where they were very stubborn about their language right pakistan is a islamic country and they declared urdu as their national language right and we all know that bangladesh was a before called as east pakistan and it was a bengali speaking region right and when urdu was being imposed on the east pakistan we all know what happened it there was a civil war and then it was it uh, you know led to the liberation of Bang bangladesh right similarly the all the civil war which was here happening in sri lanka was also based on language right sinhala as a language being imposed by declared as a national language and many other languages like tamil etc were being actually ignored and therefore the tamil people the sri lankan tamils the indian tamils started revolt against and protest against the sri lankan government right so this article talks about the same and it also says on the positive side that on the other hand singapore also had this pressure to impose china chinese as their national language but the founder founding father of the country singapore lee kuan yew who was the architect of modern singapore instead demanded that english should be imposed as the national language and rightly it was being imposed as a national language and today we know that singapore has become the global business hub right similarly south africa is a peculiar example where they have the national anthem you know which consists of five languages right so five languages are included in this in their national anthem and in this way it is the most unique anthem in the world in this regard right so we have to learn lessons from from singapore and south africa and imposing hindi as which is the first language of the residents of only 12 out of the 35 states of the ut would be a very bad idea and it may also lead to the disintegration of the country right so therefore we must treat carefully and uh, therefore this issue was being raised so they may always ask you the question about the schedule where the languages are mentioned how many scheduled languages are there which was the first language to be added which all countries have their national languages so we have talked about 
Sri Lanka and Pakistan, right? So this is there, right? So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Stay tuned for more such updates. Press the bell icon. Do like, share, and comment. God bless you. Wish you all the best. Good day. Goodbye.